a very warm welcome to you. This is Nite Live from the National Assembly. My name is Osedi Adibayo, and it is the turn of the House of Representatives, the House of the Nigerian People. The PDP Congresses are yet to be concluded, and as we get to hear in the course of this program, it is the tradition of the House that whenever a political party is holding a Congress or a convention, that members of the party are given the opportunity to actively participate in the program. So, we will not be taking proceedings from the chamber. But we have a package for you in which we are going to raise a number of issues. And one of the issues we are going to raise is the fact that in this part of the world, we have a way with words. We talk of restructuring, we talk of downsizing, we talk of right-sizing. The bottom line is that somebody is being disengaged from his work. What are the socio-economic implications? These are some of the issues examined by a committee on in taking up one of the oil companies. But before I let you into all the details, guess who I have on set? When you talk of political aflaga aflege, when you talk of sagacity, when you talk of bohaha, well, welcome to NTA Life from the National Assembly, Honorable Patrick Obahiagon, also known as Igudo Migudo. You're welcome, sir. The pleasure is mine, Bosidi. Yes, sir. So how are you today? Very good. In apple pie order. Healthy. Always ready for parliamentary work. Okay. I, I know you were at the Edo State House of Assembly. So how has your experience in the State Assembly prepared you for the challenges of the National Assembly? Fantastic. Uh, don't forget I did eight years at the Edo State House of Assembly. And by the grace of the grand architect of the universe, that opportunity had assisted me colossally in dotting the parliamentary eyes and crossing the legislative teeth and has put me in good stead for the due discharge of my parliamentary onus probandi. Because when you examine the relationship between parliament at the state level and parliament at the national assembly, the difference, if any, it's one of a twiddly dumb and twiddly day. Little or no difference. The only difference, of course, being that whereas in the state houses of assembly, you only impact on the micro terrestrial plane. At the national assembly, you are talking at a macro level. So if you ask me, there is a dialectical rapport between parliament at the state level and parliament at the national level. It is one of a microcosm in the macrocosm. So in a nutshell, I want to say that my experience in serving as a legislator for eight years and my experience when I was leader of the Edison House of Assembly for four years stood me certainly in good stead for this assignment at the national level. That way you have been a vibrant member of this National Assembly as it were. Partly yes. Yes, partly yes. Because uh, it is terra, it is terra firma for me, and not terra incognita. It's familiar, familiar terrain. Uh, and once you were seized of the nuances of parliamentary discourse and discobolos, it follows therefore that it was going to be terra firma for you, partly. But again, partly is equally responsible for the fact that you cannot succeed as a parliamentarian if you are not cosmopolitan, you must be prepared to enmesh yourself in societal dialectics for you to be able to contribute efficaciously in a utilitarian mode. So, if you are a parliamentarian and you don't, you, you don't go through the ritual of even reading newspapers, you don't buff yourself in the aqua of the political cross currents. Then you are going to be jejun. You are going to be caloristic in your contributions. So yes, my experience in the status of assembly has been responsible for my vibrancy in one breath. At another breath, my desire to perpetually entrench myself in political, social, and intellectual currents have equally contributed in its own state. 
So in essence, what challenge are you giving to your uh, other colleagues? Sector simplicitas. They must avoid regular big stouting, suyaing, big stouting, and protest uh, Those are not the real issues. They must be prepared to enmesh themselves in societal dialectics. They must pull their nose to the grindstone. She for buffer me a wall the Kene philosopher said the difference between me and my other colleagues is that when my other colleagues are cavorting in the dark alleys, I am in my library working myself 19 to the dozen. You cannot succeed in life if you are not disciplined. You must be puritanical in your predisposition. You must engage in an exercise of self-purification and mortification. You must engage in an exercise of self-abnegation. You must exercise in an, you must engage in an exercise of spiritual emulation. You must discipline the flesh. You must conquer the flesh. You must allow the spiritual aspect of you preponderate the material aspect, especially when you have chosen to represent the people. So that at the end of the day you can truly really say, Vendi Vidi Biki. What is the meaning of that? I came, I saw, I conquered. Okay, so you, just like I told you that you are a vibrant contributor to debates at the, on the floor of the house. At times, does it really bother you whether the people get to understand what you say because of those big, big grammar? Well, let me say that I have been maniacally bewildered in the words of Peter Pan over Gasted and Flabberwind when I am confronted by people as to what they stigmatize as my verbagogical gymnosophic gyrations. But let me opportunity to say that I have never set out. I don't deliberately set out to confuse my audience. Something you want me to be done. When I talk, they just come in ceaseless takatu. Never that I could not I bet you don't give what you don't have. What I have I give. What is your parting word to Nigerians? My parting word to Nigerians is to be patient with the president of the country, President Umaru Musa Yaradwa. I appreciate that a lot of people at this time are becoming very critical in assessing the president because they believe that eight months is enough to chart a visionary trajectory. I share those sentiments, but at the same time, let us not forget that the country was in a state of economic quagmire, political phantasmagoria, and social stupor at the time the president came on board. So I appeal to Nigerians to be a little bit patient with him, but at the same time, I want to appeal to Mr. President to see the victory in the court as a wake-up challenge for him to leave the position of recupency into one of recusancy. Eight months, people should be able to say this is the direction of Mr. President. Eight months, people should be able to say Mr. President stands for this. There is a difference between amiability, there is a difference between decency and activism. The president must leave his position of political and social and administrative lethargy and take the driver's seat. As with the president, he drives and others follow. So whereas I appeal to Nigerians to be patient with him, I call, it, call on Mr. President to ascend the challenges of governance. And he cannot do that except he takes the driver's seat as the political dowager, the political emir of France Jordan, and the political major double. The box stops on the table.